Hello everyone. Today I am here with my April reading wrap up as well as my May to be read and I'm really excited to talk about the books I read for the month of April. I think because I gave them all really high ratings so it's almost like a recommendation video. So yeah let's just go on with the show. First book that I completed in the month of April was The Impossible Knife of Memory by Lori Halls Anderson. This is about a teenage girl named Haley and she is going through a lot of trauma and drama in her life because her dad suffers from PTSD with a side of mental illness with like a side of alcoholism due to the aforementioned things and thus she kind of feels obligated to take care of him so nothing happens to him and because of that she feels reluctant to really commit to school or any kind of future of her own and the book is sort of about her journey through the different relationships in her life to see if she can find something of her own and something that is just hers, I would say. I haven't met a Lori Hall Sanderson book that I didn't like and I still haven't met one because I thought this book was amazing. I really loved all the characters. I loved the relationship between Haley and her sort of boyfriend Finn. It was like an awesome ship. I also loved the general like weird humor in this book. There's a lot of witty sarcasm and just general wit within the sort of sad parts in the book. And there's also just a lot of crazy drama. I flipping loved it and I knew I would because Lori Hall Sanderson is one of my favorite authors. So I gave this five stars. The next book that I completed was City of Glass, which is the third book in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. So woohoo, I've reached the halfway point in the series, which was my goal for the year, but I think I'm definitely going to try to read past that and maybe try to finish the whole series. In terms of the third book, I did really enjoy it, but I did feel like it was a little bit of a slower read for me than the second book, which was pretty much all action. The third book was a little slower to me just because there was a change in location, so thus the author had to do some more world building. And also, Cassandra Clare definitely had to take time to kind of work through all the emo sort of junk that all these characters have in their lives. Let's face it, there's a lot of relationship craziness. I don't know if there's a name for the love shape that is happening in this Mortal Instruments series because let's face it, it's bigger than a triangle and it's bigger than a square. And uh, yeah, if you count side characters that briefly think they're attracted to someone, well, it becomes a rather large shape. If you're gonna have a bunch of characters work together for a common goal, it's very important that you sort of work through all your craziness with your relationships. So those elements did make it a bit of a slower read, but that is not to say that I didn't highly enjoy the third book in the series. I still loved a lot of the reveals and things that happen. So I still gave this book a five star rating. I guess in terms of like overall enjoyment, maybe a four and three quarter star. I'm gonna add like that extra quarter star just because I agreed with all the author's choices that she made in the book. And I don't think she should have done anything differently. So it's still a five star to me. Third book that I completed was a book called Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Carson Levine. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing the last part of that title right, Bamar, but I don't really know for sure, but that's what sounds pretty to me. Basically, Two Princesses of Bamar is about two princesses. One is named Meryl and one is named Addie. Meryl is very brave. She can't wait to go out on adventures and slay dragons and griffins and all that crazy mess. And Addie is a little bit more reserved and is also a little bit more afraid of things. So she really looks up to Meryl for her bravery, but she never thinks that she can like meet that le level of bravery. And basically what happens is there's sort of a sickness that people get cursed with 
in the kingdom and Meryl gets the sickness and thus Addie has to find the cure and go on an adventure and face her fears so that she can save her sister. It's just a fun fantasy adventure kind of story. I picked this up because as some of you know I am obsessed with Gail's book Ella Enchanted. Like I love Ella Enchanted so so much. It's like one of my favorite books and I reread Ella Enchanted this year and then realized that I had never read any other book by Gail Carson Levine so I thought I better get on that. I saw this book on Scribd and I said I'm reading this Two Princesses of Mar and I'm so glad that I did. I was like what have I been missing all my life by not reading more of this woman's books because I loved it. And I feel like everybody from middle grade to adult can read it. There's something in there for everyone and I really like how the book talks about what bravery means and what facing fears is kind of about as well as the fact that this book contains a really awesome evil dragon and I don't know why I love awesome slightly evil dragons but I just do as well as a really awesome ship. I shipped Addie and Reese so hard. I really love how this author always represents romantic relationships in a really positive way. You know, it's like the characters can have like their own independence, like they love each other but they also have elements of their own. They're not like just wrapped up in each other and there's nothing else but that. So I always think that is really great and the relationship between Addie and Reese in this book is definitely like that and that's kind of what I like about her other book Ella Enchanted as well. So yeah, it just hit all the checkpoints for me. I just, yes, read this book. It's fabulous. It's also flipping adorable. Obviously I gave it five stars. The final book that I read in April was my reread of Stephen King's Firestarter. So if you don't know what Firestarter is about, it's about a man named Andy and his daughter Charlie and they are on the run because back in the day when Andy was young and in college, him and his future wife Vicky took part of an experiment in which they were injected with a drug called Lot 6 which sort of made them manifest psychic abilities and this experiment was conducted by a group called The Shop which was sort of this very 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 secret government faction. Andy and Vicky married and had children. They produced this little girl Charlie who shows really early on in life that she has the ability called pyrokinesis. Basically she can set fires with her mind and because of this a lot of crazy stuff goes down which leads to the shop chasing Andy and Charlie down so that they can basically experiment on her and figure out what makes her tick. There is way more to it than that, but <laughs> that is basically the gist of what Firestarter is about. Like I said, this was a reread, so I knew already that I was going to like the book, but I feel like I particularly was glad that I reread it because I feel like I really understood the emotions and the themes in this book better than I did when I was a teenager. It's just that as an adult I've learned a little bit more about cons conspiracy theory and also about science and also about the relationship between father and daughter and the criminal psychology of some of the cray cray people in this book like Rain Bird and so I feel like I really understood all those elements a lot better on this second read through. So I was very glad that I reread this and read it with some more knowledge to apply to this book. Of course I think the characters are amazing because Stephen King creates really excellent character development in all of his books. So I love that element and also I really enjoyed sort of the structure of the story and how it kind of intercuts like a film which I didn't 
I don't think noticed the first time. Weird fact, the first time I read this book, one of the lines gave me an idea for a song lyric, and the second time I read the book, another line in this book gave me an idea for a song lyric. So I guess it's a good song lyric inspirational line book thing. I don't know what I'm trying to say now, but you know, whatevs. I give this five stars a second time through and also if you're somebody that wants to read Stephen King and you might not be wanting to start with one of his scarier novels this one is a really good one to start with because it's not very long but also because it's more of a science fiction novel to me if you want to read something sort of science fictiony this is the way to go not to say though that the violence isn't pretty violent because it can be. On to my to be read for the month of May. I'm actually super behind on my to be read. I have not even started some of the books that I've mentioned in some of the previous wrap up videos. Some of them I did start, some of them I didn't. And thus I feel like I really need to start completing some of my current reads that I've been reading for a little while so that I can get to those. So I'm going to really just have two books that I'm going to try to officially finish this month that are already current reads. The first one is one that I started recently and it's called The Wild Queen, The Days and Nights of Mary Queen of Scots. I actually really hate this title, by the way, because it sounds like some kind of, I don't know, weird novel instead of, you know, a historical YA book, but that is what it is. I just felt like reading in a historical fiction book that was about a real life person. So I'm going to try to complete this one. In addition, I am going to get my focus on and finish Blameless, which is the third book in the Parasol Protectorate series. By the way, I've been saying the name of that series wrong for like three videos. I keep saying Proctorate and it's obviously Protectorate. That should be something that went into the I messed up book tag because apparently I cannot pronounce titles correctly. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to really try to make myself finish Blameless. It's not that I'm not enjoying Blameless, but I've been reading it for several months and really slow because my ship is broken up at the moment and I know it's very trivial, but I don't know. It makes you just kind of like, mm. like the book is funny still, but I really want my ship back. I want my I want my Alexa and Connell. I'm going to make myself get over this hump because there's a lot more to Blameless than this little meager detail and I just need to like get myself together. So I'm just going to put my focus on finishing those two books and if I complete those books then we'll see what happens with the rest of my TBR. That was my wrap up for April as well as my TBR for May and I will see you next week with another video. Thank you for watching oh fabulous ones and bye!